What's going on everybody? Welcome to another Kaggle tutorial. Also, I'm going to be probably throwing this one at the end of the machine learning tutorial series, the kind of in-depth practical series. So while I was poking around this data science bowl, I also noticed that they put up this dogs vs. cats redux kernels edition. And uh, so that's what we're going to run through in this one, simply because it's it's a really simple classification task of, as you might guess, dogs versus cats, uh, just identifying whether there's a dog or a cat in the picture. This one's kind of incorrect in that none of the pictures should have both a dog and a cat in them. But anyway, uh, that's what we're going to be doing. So uh, if you don't have a Kaggle account, go ahead and make, it, make one, come to data. Uh, you'll have to accept the terms and all that when you come here, but otherwise make the downloads. It's about uh, seven, eight hundred megabytes before you download it, and then, or before you extract it, rather. And then after that, it's I forget how how large it is, but it's like I think the training is twenty five thousand files, and the testing is twelve thousand five hundred or something. Oh, it says it right there. Wow, I wonder if that was on screen. As yes, it sure was. Anyway, <laughs> yes, there you have it. So that's what we're gonna be doing. So if you need to pause the video or whatever, get everything downloaded and extracted and just kind of keep in mind where you've got it. All right, once you're ready to rumble, uh, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna get started. So because I'm gonna throw this at the end of the ML series, I'm just going to note that up to this point, you really should have um, TensorFlow, so pip install TensorFlow. You should also have tflearn, pip install tflearn. And then I'm also going to use this tqdm. Um, it's just a really kind of fancy way to have pretty output while you're loading. It was suggested to me by one of my viewers, so I thought, hey, that's actually pretty cool. So uh, I'm going to use it. You don't have to. You can just where we and you just you can use it in any kind of for loop basically as you iter over the whatever the iterable is. You just use tqdm. Uh, so wherever we do that, if you don't want to do it, just don't do it. <laughs> Simple enough. Alrighty, so uh, the first part is just simple pre-processing. Um, so we're going to bring in the data and do some pre-processing against this data. So um, the first thing that we're going to do is let's just make some imports. So we're going to import CV2 for just uh, resizing the image, basically. We're going to import NumPy as MP. We're going to import OS. We're going to, from random, we're going to import shuffle so we can shuffle our data. NumPy for arrays, obviously. OS so we can play with the directories shuffle so we can shuffle and then from tqdm import t import tqdm for professional looping with a progress bar now we're going to find some constants trainer um, i'll fill these in in a moment but trainer tester we're going to say um, image image size and for now i'll just say 50 here and then lr for learning rate 1e negative 3, so that's uh, 0 0.001. All right, so um, the trainer is wherever you've extracted these files to. I'm just going to copy and paste mine because I don't feel like typing it all out. None of you probably have the exact same path. So I'm going to paste, and I'm going to copy over here. Paste, cool. So this is where I've extracted the data. This isn't necessarily where yours is. Just wherever you've extracted the data, that's what needs to be in there. Uh, image size, that's where we're going to resize the images to. They're not all the same size. <clears throat> Some of them, and, and this is 50, as in 50 by 50. So not all these images are a perfect square, but we're going to make them a perfect square. So there's going to be a little bit of, um, uh, I'm trying to think, distortion, um, probably, but that's that's okay. Finally, we're going to have one more parameter, and that's going to be model name. We're going to use this just because... Um, as we go through this, we're going to kind of tweak a few things and maybe change some things. And it's useful to have some sort of model name. That way, when you save the model, you can remember what was this model. To my knowledge, you can't just like in TensorFlow query a model and get like how many layers and how many nodes and stuff. There might be a way. Like I wouldn't be surprised. It's surely the model file has it in there. Maybe you can just open it up. I don't really know, actually. But uh, regardless, if you try to load a model into a neural net that's not the same dimensions, uh, you're going to have problems. So I like to save them as something somewhat useful. So I'm just going to call this first one dogs vs. cats dash um, some formatting dash some more formatting dot model. Um, and then we'll do dot format. And I'll just for now we'll save learning rate. And then let's just say this is a two conv basic for the tutorial. 
Um, so two convolutional layers, and then we're just going to say basic because we're basic. Continuing along. So the first order of business now is to process the data. What we have right now is once you've extracted the data is all these images, they're labeled um, by number. Actually, I think it's cat dot one and then cat dot two, cat dot three and so on and dog dot one and dog dot two and so on. So what we need to do and their color images and all that. So what we're going to do is we need to load in the images and then as all machine learning goes, you've got your features and your labels. Well, for the features, we're going to convert just to a NumPy grayscale array. Done. And it's just a 2D array for the image. Luckily, these are 2D images if you've been following the other Kaggle example uh, for the... Uh, for the medical data, that's 3D data. We're trying to use a 3D confident, um, super expensive. Anyway, um, so yeah, just simple 2D grayscale data. Um, and then the label is either dog or cat, which obviously is unacceptable. We need that to be one hot. So to do that, we're going to convert to, we're going to say, you know, the one hot array, basically this first value is um, going to be catness. The second value will be dogness. So a cat would be, you know, all catness zero dogness and a dog classification would be zero catness all dogness okay so um, we're going to define label image so this will be a function it's going to take um, an image it's actually an image path that's okay we're going to say now the word underscore label is going to be equal to image dot split we're going to split by a period and then we're going to go um, back three Possibly. I'm going to check that, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. If word underscore label equals uh, cat, we're going to just keep this all in one line. Colon um, return, right, um, all cat, zero doggo, and then L if word label equals dog, we return zero catness full doggo yep we don't delete it all <laughs> okay so that's our label image invalid syntax oh comparison operator not assignment there we are continuing along uh now we need one more helper function and that's going to be the create basically create the train data that's actually going to use this so define create underscore and maybe this is kind of small on the screen let's make this a little bigger oh yeah now we're cooking. Maybe that's too big, but let me do this real quick. All right, define, uh, and then we're gonna say create trains, probably the last function we write anyway in this, this video. Create train data, and then what are we gonna do? Well, first we're gonna say train underscore data equals an empty list. Then we're gonna say for image in, and again, this is one of those examples where it's tqdm, encasing whatever the iterable is going to be but in our case it's os.lister whatever the trainer was so again if you don't want to use tqdm uh, or i don't think tqdm is available in the kernels on kaggle so i don't really know but anyway um just just remove the whole tqdm super simple so for the image in there what do we want to do well we're going to say the label equals label underscore image image and then what we're going to do um yeah so for example i th there, yes there's negative three should be right because you've got it'll be i know you, you everyone else probably isn't paying any attention to this anymore but you're gonna have dog dot 93 dot and i think they're png so you split by a period um the negative first if is here the negative or the yeah, the negative first if it would be here, negative two will be here, and negative three will be here. That's that's the the word label that we want. I know you guys were still thinking about that. I'm sure. Okay, now uh, we're gonna say path equals os dot path dot join, and we're gonna join train dir and whatever that image actually is. So that gives us the full path that I mentioned. Now we're gonna load it in with cv2 image equals cv2 dot m read and we're gonna read the path and we're gonna read this in as a cv2 dot m read underscore gray scale. Now we're gonna resize it. We could also just encase this in a resize as well. So I think I will actually cv2 dot resize all of this. And then 
um, but in tuple form, it's going to be the, the constant we have up here, image size. So this will be an image size by image size, like so. Beautiful. Now, <clears throat> that gives us the image data. So all we're going to do at this point is train. And actually, let's see, we said train data. Let's say, we'll call this training data. Training data dot append. And we will append the NumPy array of the image data. And then also the, actually, let's make sure these are NumPy arrays, just uh, for, just to be absolutely certain. I'm actually pretty sure the image data probably already is a NumPy array, or at least acceptable. Um, our label definitely wasn't. Um, but we just want to make sure everything's an array, a NumPy array. OK, once we've done that, um, now what we want to do is shuffle the data. So shuffle, and shuffle happens to variables in place. So you don't need to redefine them. In fact, if you did, I'm pretty sure it doesn't work. Now we're going to save it just in case. Uh, and we'll just call it train data.npy for NumPy file. And then training data is what's being saved. And then we'll also return training data. OK, so every time we, we train data, basically, um, you should only need to do this process one time. And so um, that first time, we will just return the training data anyway. But we're also going to save it. That way, in the future, if we want to run this, um, we don't need to actually rerun the function. We can just load in the train data.numpy file. The only time you would ever have to run this a second time is if you change image size. So if you wanted, rather than a 50 by 50, maybe 100 by 100 or something like that. Uh, which we probably won't change the image image size here. We're mostly going to mess with the network size. 50 by 50 should be pretty acceptable. Um, even 50 by 50 is kind of on the larger side, although I don't know in the last year what people are typically doing, but it sure seemed like in 20, 2016 people were doing pretty small images, so 50 by 50 is kind of big, um, relatively. Okay, so that's it here. Uh, what we're going to do in the next tutorial is actually do all the processing of the data and then either in that one we'll start the ConvNet or in the one after that we'll do the ConvNet. Um, we probably can actually just write out the ConvNet in the next one. Actually, we're probably just going to copy and paste the ConvNet from the TF Learn tutorial. There's no reason to rewrite it out. Um, so yeah, I think we'll actually just do that. And anybody who doesn't understand it can go to the, the actual tutorial where we explained it. Anyway, that's what you have to look forward to. If you've got questions, comments, concerns, whatever up to this point, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.